The International Space Station is due to receive another big shipment of supplies later this month on the next Dragon cargo ship. It's currently targeted for launch on March 16th. It'll carry personal supplies for the crew members, as well as equipment for the station. And this Dragon is also going to carry a number of experiments, and we're going to be previewing those experiments in the days leading up to the launch. One of those new experiments coming up on the Dragon intends to take advantage of the microgravity environment to help develop new drugs to treat Huntington's disease. Joining us to talk about it is Gwen Owens. She's a Ph.D. and M.D. student at Caltech and UCLA, respectively, and she's part of the team on the experiment known as Crystallization of Huntington Exxon 1 using microgravity. Gwen, could you start by briefly reminding us just what Huntington's disease is? Hi, good morning. Yes, um, Huntington's disease is an incurable fatal neurodegenerative disease. It's caused by a gene mutation that creates an abnormal protein, which is called Huntington, which leads to degeneration of the nervous system. Huntington's disease slowly diminishes an affected individual's ability to walk, talk, and think. Eventually, the person can't care for him or herself and dies from medical problems that arise from the effects of Huntington's on the body. Each child of a person with Huntington's disease has a 50-50 chance of inheriting the fatal gene, and everyone who carries the gene will develop the disease. Huntington's disease is one of the more common genetic disorders, and more than a quarter of a million Americans have Huntington's disease or are at risk of inheriting the disease from an affected parent. Unfortunately, um, at present, there's no treatment to stop or even slow the deadly progression of this disease. Though there's been a lot of research done, and, and I understand that, that researchers think that the answer may be, may be able to be found by successfully crystallizing a certain protein. Uh, is that something that you can't do on the ground? Um, it's something we haven't been able to do on the ground yet. Um, we'd like to determine the three-dimensional structure of Huntington, which is the protein that causes Huntington's disease. Um, to study the Huntington protein to make drugs against it, um, we need detailed three-dimensional structural information about it. And one very good way of doing that is using X-ray crystallography, um, which is a technique that lets us see molecules and locate individual atoms in a protein. Um, but for studying the structure of abnormal proteins like Huntington, using X-ray crystallography, we need to produce sufficiently large, perfect crystals of the protein. Um, on Earth, however, we haven't been able to grow crystals from many important proteins, including Huntington, because of gravity. Um, despite our best efforts, the Huntington protein has evaded crystallization for more than a decade. Um, however... Um, there's been good evidence that crystals grown in microgravity are able to reach much larger sizes and more perfect forms than those grown on Earth because there's um, no effects of gravity. And, and I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. And we've heard for years that we've that growing crystals for different purposes in space, and so I, I take it that that's your experiment is to, to grow these crystals. Could, could you describe what's going to happen in your experiment once it reaches the station? Sure, sure. So we're using a technique that's called vapor diffusion to grow crystals. It's a technique that can be used both in microgravity and on Earth. Um, in this technique, we have one drop that contains our protein, our Huntington, and in another drop that's much larger, we have what's called a precipitant solution. When these two different solutions um, can communicate by vapor diffusion, um, water can come out of the protein solution and go into the large precipitant solution. As this happens, the solution of protein, of Huntington, um, becomes supersaturated. And when it becomes supersaturated, it can form crystals. And so we have a device um, that is called the high, handheld high-density protein crystal growth system. Um, the image is of a small metallic container that holds several of our sample blocks, um, 30 different samples in all. Um, there's a small activation-deactivation tool that's shown on the left-hand side. Um, and what happens is that prior to launch, we have our two solutions, our large precipitant solution and a drop of our protein that are kept separate. 
Um, it's sent up to the International Space Station, and their crew members turn the activation deactivation switch um, so that these two solutions are now in vapor diffusion contact, and um, the experiment can begin once it reach mi- reaches microgravity. Um, while it's on the International Space Station, it's just in a quiescent microgravity um, environment, and then at the end of the experiment, um, the astronauts will flip the switch, um, the activation deactivation switch, to deactivate the experiment, and it will be um, returned on the next Dragon cargo ship. So, in your case in particular, having a ship that can bring cargo down to Earth is critical. Absolutely. Um, there's no way to get data from our crystallization experiments while aboard the station. So the Dragon spacecraft is essential for our experiment to get the crystals down from the station. And once you do, what is the next step in your research? What do you do with these crystals once you get them? <laughs> so if we can obtain crystals of Huntington of sufficient size, which we predict they will be able to in microgravity, we test these crystals using x-rays. Um, so we Um, Focused x-rays emerge from a narrow tube called a collimator and strike the crystal. The crystalline atoms cause the beam of x-rays to diffract in a number of different directions, and we record this pattern of diffraction. Um, And when we measure the angles and intensities of this diffracted beam, we can produce a three-dimensional picture of the densities of electrons within the crystal. And then using this electron density map, we can obtain a very high-resolution three-dimensional protein structure. And with that, hopefully able to develop uh, something that will combat the defective gene. Yes, exactly. But using this 3D structure, we hope to be able to identify a potential drug treatment for Huntington's disease. Uh, We would aim to identify specific sections of the protein that might interact with other compounds um, to produce new targeted drugs that work efficiently with few side effects and hopefully improve the quality of life for patients around the world with Huntington's disease. It's very interesting, and it it makes a lot of sense as you explain it. We'll be looking forward to uh, seeing how it goes. Thank you for for taking a few minutes to talk with us about it. Thank you very much for your time. Gwen Owens is a member of the team on the experiment known as Crystallization of Huntington Exxon 1 using microgravity, which will be flying to the International Space Station later this month on the next Dragon cargo ship.